Hi guys, I want to cover a more traditional uh, spec, I guess. This is going to be the 3120. Uh, I guess I call it Holy PvP. Give you like an overview of some of the gear I have on this server. Remember, it's a progressive server, so there's no access to like AQ40, not even ZG yet. Um. It's pretty good. My weapon and shield enchants are wrong. Probably should have stamina, icy, or the plus healing enchant if I want to spend that much money on that terrible hammer. You can take a look at uh, it's kind of what you'd expect. This is PvP uh, healing, so the idea is you're going to be in a pre-made, so you don't really need a lot of seal of righteousness damage. So I skipped that. I went ahead and took the improved RF because I planned on doing some tanking. And toughness is really what you should do if you're going all all uh, PvP, but whatever. I I figured I'd end up having to do some. So I often talk about gearing down as like kind of an example. I'm gonna be PvPing with this suit. Still has pretty good synergy, but I wanted to put on stuff. It's more like kind of stuff you can start off collecting. Um. Also, I like to go a little bit more spell power heavy when I'm doing pugs. I'm going to show a pug first because, honestly, it's just a lot more entertaining. I, I will put a pre-made fight in it, but those things are like five minutes long. We just kind of steamroll them and stand around AFK. Anyways, let's take a look. So, <clears throat> as a 31-20-0... You should probably pretty much never spend your time attacking people. I mean, but this is part of the reason I wear spell power oftentimes when I'm pugging. Because uh, I guess no one else is really fulfilling the task like they should. So you kind of have to be more versatile than being a dedicated healer all the time. Um, the better the guys are that you're with... And the more organized they are, you know, the more time you should spend healing. Don't bother running around smacking people like you do. I do in this. So I don't really recommend this build for pugging, as it's like kind of like playing. I'll give you an analogy, like support in League of Legends. You don't really want to play support if you're like a platinum player playing in a bronze game. And um, another problem is that it just doesn't, it's hard to carry with this build. And that's why I love Holy Reckoning, because you can still carry and you can switch your role based on whatever the composition is going on. So I guess I'm done ragging on this for a little bit. I'm going to start talking about, okay, well, why would you use this? First and foremost, you can probably get away with raiding by having to change your spec, save you a lot of money. 31 holy is always appreciated. You probably still won't be able to use this build if you're uh, in a guild that does speed runs, as it's not totally optimized. Where it really shines is in large pre made groups where you're farming honor because. Everyone has a specific task, and they do that task the best. And you need the extra holy crit, because you're going to be healing, cleansing, and absorbing damage. Those are your three tasks. You, you're not there to burst a flag carrier down, or even anchor a flag, usually. Usually following. You're not getting any 1v1s. And that being said, it's not a very good uh, 1v1 spec either. However, it can 1v1, and it gets much, much better with a 5-piece or 8-piece tier 2. Or, it actually, it, gets, it starts getting pretty good around a 8-piece Lawbringer. You really need to rely on procs and set bonuses. The thing about it, though, like when it comes to 1v1, it kind of uses all the same stuff that Spell Reckoning would use, or Holy Reckoning would use. For 1v1ing, 
and those builds will just 1v1 better in almost every circumstance. Um, yeah. So I would definitely use this if your pre-made was going to go up against another pre-made and like your honor was on the line like oh we're the best and stuff. Uh, and I, I always talk about how good Holy Reckoning is but even in pre-mades I would still consider doing a Holy Reckoning over this build because while this is better in top tier pre-made fighting if you are pre-mating 80% of the time and 20% of the time you're pugging then you still might want to go Holy Wreck because you <clears throat> you know you don't want to be SOL with no friends or, or at least group with someone if you're going to go healing you know walk around Stormwind or Ironforge and uh Find what warriors you want to go with. Ask them if they want to come. Make a group of four people for War Song or five for Rathy Basin, and make sure you have the elements to make it so you can carry as a healer. Quickly, it's time to cover some of the uh, elements to this build that make it unique. Um, well, of course, you get Holy Shock, and there's a lot of builds that get Holy Shock. And because you're not really trying to do any damage, you can itemize really easily defensive stats, you know, mana, self-explanatory, um, plus healing. Uh, in PvP, it's pretty close to PvE healing. I like mana regen just a tiny bit more in PvP than I do in uh, PvE in case like I get mana drain down to zero or I just feel like there's so much stuff I do other than plus you know other than healing so plus healing isn't quite as mandatory as it is in uh, PvE where you do a lot of down rank healing. Now the 20 in defense, what's so special about that is the improved concentration aura. And if you're an alliance, you're going to be fighting Horde, obviously, and Horde is what, like 50% undead and uh, mages and warlocks? I mean, I mean, not really 50%, but god, it feels like it sometimes. And... Nothing sucks more than getting silenced, so it's only 15%, and it's not very reliable, but it's a game changer sometimes. Like, if you can just resist a silence at a clutch moment, it's a game changer. Now, I don't have these items I'm about to talk about, and I'm not sure how good it is compared to just getting more stats, but something. I'd like one of y'all to try and tell me how you feel about it is the the necklace that increases your chance to reduce silence and then get the DM West rings they're not unique so you can get two of them give you another 5% each to resist silence so you can have like a 32% silence resist and then you can also have you know it's like it's like a shadow priest silence to have like shadow aura on or, or not shadow aura but a shadow resist gear I mean, maybe you can get up to like 40% silence resist against certain classes. I haven't tried it. It just sounds like that could be really, really good if you're playing in a team pre-made where, you know, they're they're going to freaking blink on top of you just to land a silence in time or whatever. It's They're going to be using spell alert. They're going to be doing everything they can to keep you silenced. So one of the sacrifices that will come with getting the improved concentration aura is you won't be able to get as much in the stun uh, cooldown reduction, which was one of the more powerful talents in the protection tree. Why I think this is acceptable is because the play style of 3120 
you really want to be at max range. Now the only time you really don't want to be at max range is when you know your warriors are about to charge or intercept. So you gotta you gotta move up and go a little deep. And you really don't use the stun on cooldown. You should be using the stun, and I, I'm guilty of this because I play so much retribution where you're just like, well, I throw a stun out now, I'll have another stun in 35 seconds to do something else with. With this, you can get it down to 50 seconds, but it's uh, it's more about the clutch stun at the, the critical moment. Like, oh god, I have to stun this mage that just blinked, his ice block is down. I know he can't silence me now, or this guy is gonna ruin the flag cap in A B. I have to stun him now. It's it's not something it just plays different in Rhett, where you you're closer to your opponents all the time. Like if you're just throwing your stun out on cooldown as deep holy, uh you're gonna fuck yourself and everyone on your team over. So you're not using it on cooldown. I find it better to probably get the silence resist. Um, and also, you gotta remind you that silence resist and the concentration aura helps everyone in your group too, which is a big deal. Uh, but if you I could see why someone would want to go the other way and get it down to 45 seconds. Really, it's like tomato, tomato. They're both pretty reasonable builds for a pre-made. So let's talk about auras real quick. One thing about 31-20-0 is if everyone's topped off, which will happen, you know, you get everyone topped off, maybe you get them rebuffed, you're still going to get some in combat uh, downtime. And I think more than other specs, your global will be open. And if your global's open, you should probably look at what's going on and consider changing your aura. Now, you do have improved concentration, so that's what you should be using most of the time. And that's why I don't use uh, the talents for improved devotion aura, even though it's incredibly awesome for casters. It's just so is concentration, and you have the better version of it. Um, but what I was going with that is, you should change your auras a lot. And even in this this pug video, because I can't do some sort of move that's going to do a whole lot of damage. Um, I'm more likely to change my auras. I think you'll see me changing my auras a decent amount to fit the situation. Because, I mean, why not? You've got an open global and there's no way one aura is always the best. There's always something going on. So let's go over what gear to get started. Now obviously, with this spec, a full suit of Nax gear, you know, Redemption is unbelievably powerful and maybe is something you would have to fight like another top in Nax guild and y'all have, you know, bragging rights on the line or something. But for us normal plebs that aren't clearing Nax on the weekly, um, you just want to farm honor. There's, there's two ways to go about this. Like, if you really don't want to burden anyone, and you want to be as powerful as you can before you even get started, you know, Lawbringer is a great suit. It's almost specifically designed. Lots of armor and stam. Sure, it has a little bit of random fighting stats in it, but it also has really good um, resist. I don't know, it's just ideally it's it's not something you have to do because you know why why spend so much time farming one thing just to farm another thing? Because you're trying to farm whatever field marshal or grand marshal gear, I understand. But 
ideally you want to get your full suit of Lawbringer, and then that's a good stepping stone into your PvP gear. So go as holy, rank up, then you know get the sweet gear, and then do some variation of retribution that you like. Another reasonable solution is get uh, player made armor. There's several player made pieces that have pretty good plus healing that are plate that can keep your armor up. White Soul Helmet is a nice starting helmet. Uh, honestly, the competition for the tier 2 helmet is actually usually pretty low, oftentimes lower than the uh, tier 1 helmet for Lawbringer because uh, just about how how many times a week you can do Ani is higher and it's kind of easier just to kill Ani than go all the way through uh, MC. So, you know, you could pick up some tier 2 and it's pretty good for healing too and mix it in with your tier one, but um, you know, if you can't do that either, if you just can't raid at all, get get plate armor with int on it. <laughs> I mean, it's that simple. You could literally probably get eagle armor for a few pieces, like off the auction house of the eagle. I'm probably still getting a pre made. Um, I think it's more important to keep your armor up. I am not a fan of people that try to heal in cloth. It's a terrible idea. Uh, good players will, or good pre-mades will sink their teeth into you. I mean, there's so many times I'm just sitting there and there's just rogues and warriors all over me. And it's like expected for me to get some flash of lights through somehow. Whereas if I had cloth, I'd just be dead. Like a matter of seconds. Some of that player made plate though also another thing the problem with it is it usually has really low stamina. So make sure you're doing uh HP enchants. The only HP enchant I might not get is like the uh bracer, because you can get the plus healing. And it's a lot of plus healing. Whereas the Librams you can get plus healing, but it's like eight plus healing. The legs and uh, helmet, or 100 HP. But when you go to Bracer, it's like 90 HP, 9 stamina, or 24 plus healing. So that's the one. Still, I still might just get 9 stamina because it's a relatively cheap enchant. If you really are desperate to make scrap a suit together, um. And you're gonna use some mail, for example. Try to make sure it's like bracers, like the Cretonius, whatever bracers from Stratholm. Something with um, like bracers aren't gonna have that high of armor no matter what you do. Don't replace like a chest piece or a helmet with mail. You're just losing too much armor. Uh, another item that's easy, easy to get. It's really 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 strong it's a green plate piece off i think the first boss in dire mall north i think it's called gallant wrist guard it's a great beginner item for pvp holy it's like int stam plus healing and it's actually plate armor so you don't have to sacrifice your defense of ability or whatever i'm trying to think of some other good stuff to start with but Dawnbringer, White Soul, Galliant. Maybe get uh, two pieces of Light Forge, get that armor bonus. Something like pieces that have the most end. It's also acceptable to get like six piece Light Forge. You shouldn't be striking very much to get the spell power though. That's more for your board and want to like solo a little bit or have some ability to fight somebody. But if you are going to do that, try to skip out on the pieces that don't have any in on them and replace them with something that's player made. 
So I think like the I think Light Forge boots don't even have any intellect on them, for example. And if you got bag space, I guess it is okay to go with leather armor and stuff. If you look at the enemy's comp and it's just really caster heavy, and maybe they have like a warrior, but you know he's a scrub and you're not worried about him. And they got some really scary casters, and I, I think it's that's like the one time. But I I would not queue randomly to a battleground not knowing what my opponents are going to be, and then not take almost complete plate armor. One really nice thing about being a holy pally is that they are they are an extremely powerful um, pre-made class. They're, they're one of the better, in my opinion, one of the better heal and combat healers. And they synergize very well with warriors. So that means you can basically get away with having suboptimal gear. Like, if you want a position as reckoning, you're going to have to have some pretty kick ass gear. And even then, you might have an easier time getting into a top tier pre made with green gear than you would as having epics. Uh, for retribution. Now, I, I personally think it's a little bit silly that that is the case because it's like, well, damn, this guy's this guy knows what he's doing. A guy in epic gear is going to be pretty valuable, uh, even as a jackal, even as a suboptimal bill. I would say most ret is a little bit suboptimal because uh, it's not that it's bad. It's just that it's not specific oriented enough and in high-end pre-mades you want to not be a jack of all trades you want to be the master of one and um i guess it kind of sucks that even if it would be better like it's almost better to put on your green gear and join a pre-made than put on your incredible ret gear because not that it's worse, it's just that other people won't know how to work with you in an efficient manner. Especially paladins, especially fighting paladins. Like, nobody, all they're going to want to do is scream at you for cleanse and freedom and bop. And you might one-shot the person that they would have taken, like, two minutes to kill, but it, that won't register and you'll never get any credit for for it. And at the end of the day, it's just... It's not always the stronger team that wins a battleground, it's the more unified. So just being holy automatically creates unity, because people know how to play with a holy paladin. That being said, it brings up another point I want to get across. I'm a big fan of like Holy Wreck, I've said a gazillion times. But in general, you probably don't want to bring up your spec. If you're anything but holy and you're trying to get in a pre-made. Like if someone asks you what your spec is. Say I'm holy and I have prot. Holy prot. Or prot holy. But you know don't get into details. Because as soon as you tell someone you have reckoning. They're going to make a bunch of assumptions. And you might not get into that pre-made. Um, now also at the same time. Don't. I guess don't um, broadcast it either. Like you wreck bomb someone, like you pull, don't pull a two-hander out and wreck bomb a rogue as holy pro and uh, you know get a one shot until you're really comfortable with the guys, because then they'll be like, "What the fuck, a ret pally's in here," and they won't want to take you back. I, it's, I know it's retarded. Also, to keep a group, try to try to keep the drama down. People are going to try to make fun of ret pallies. Just, um, you know, let it roll off your shoulders and turn it into a joke. For example, that uh, paladin that I was kicking ass with in that pug fight, we both had really shitty gear. We definitely cared it. His name's Zimmy. He's, I mean, he's actually a really good player. But I think a lot of people kind of like semi blacklist him because he's kind of he's confrontational. 
when he plays Rhett and people give him a hard time. But, I mean, you can see, like, he makes some pretty sweet moves there and he definitely carries it. But it doesn't matter. He has stigma attached to him. Um, this last clip is just, like, kind of showing off, you know, a proper pre-made fight. They're kind of boring because, I mean, I have fun just because it's so much honor. But you don't really get to do anything special. It's very rare that there's a, a pre-made strong enough to deal with currently the server I'm playing on. The, the Alliance top tier pre-mades in general beat the top horde pre-mades. Um, I don't know if the very best of the best fought what would happen. I'm sure like maybe the horde would win because... Let's face it, horde racials are better, but I'm just talking more generic than that. Anyways, um, I just guess I guess it's a good time to end this. This fault, guys. Good luck.